You're watching News Day. We're now taking you live to Sheraton Hotel Ikeja here in Lagos for the unveiling of the new Nigerian People's Party Maritime Agenda. Distinguished get permit me to recognize some people before we proceed. We have in our midst, please, if I call your name, stand up and uh, greet the audience. We have in our midst a retired ACG, I stand country general of customs, Otman Tajo. <laughs> you know, customs has gone IT. The man who introduced, he is the man who introduced Asikuda in customs. And today is in charge of the ICT department of NMPP. Can we applaud him? <laughs> we also have in our midst a barrister at law, the legal advisor of NAGAV, Barrister Fred Akokia. We also have in our midst a representative of uh, importers and exporters who ply their trade in Aspanda in Lagos, Chief Victor Amadi. Please, can you? You're welcome. In our midst, also, we have forwarder. Simeon Wano, Deputy National President of NAGAV. <laughs> also, the Board of Trustees Chairman of NAGAV, for the Chidebere Enelama. <laughs> for the media, why the churches refer to their Overseer as our father in the Lord. We, also, we as journalists have our father in the pain. We have in our midst here today the chairman, Nigeria Union of Journalists, Lagos State Council, Comrade Adeleye Ajay. <laughs> Adeleye Ajay has been a long time maritime reporter. He once headed Maritime Reporters Association of Nigeria and works for a news agency of Nigeria. He has, along with him, some members of his team, the secretary of the, of the union, Tunde Oladere. Please. <laughs> and also an ex-official member of the executive, Olaide Awosanya. <laughs> also in Amis here, we have the governorship candidate of NNPP in Niger State, Alaj Ibrahim Mohamed Yahya. We also have in our midst a strong member of NNPP, a retired controller of customs from Niger State. In fact, a friend of the house, Dr. Belo Abdul Karim. We will introduce more people, but let's kick the, the occasion by standing up for the national anthem. Because I know all of us are good singers. At the count of three, can we sing the national anthem? One, two, three.
Thank you very much. You may be seated. Before we continue, let me introduce the man who will tell us some of the problems of the industry today, an academician, Professor Dele Badejo. Please, sir, can you please can we applaud him? I know that um, many Nagaf women are here who are, equally, who are equally members of NMPP. Please, if you are here, please can you stand, for, stand up for recognition? Nagaf women MPP. NMPP wing. Where are they? Can you wave to the crowd? You yeah, are all welcome. We, we have many people who will say introduce, but let's move on. At this juncture, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, May we have the welcome address of the organizers, Edda Asubex, the MD of Prime Maritime Project, is coming to tell us why we are gathered here, Edda Asubex. Thank you, Ray, and uh, happy birthday to you. Incidentally, today is the birthday of the Master of Ceremony and is the Director of Projects of Prime Maritime Nigeria. His Excellency, Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankwanso, the presidential candidate of the New Nigerian People's Party, the founder of the NNPP, is not just the founder, is also the spiritual leader of the NNP, Dr. Boniface Anebunam, the national chairman of the New Nigerian People's Party, my brother and friend, Professor Alkali, the chairman of this great occasion, Otumba Kunle Folari who also doubles as the National Chairman of the Ports Consultative Council. On behalf of the 15 million voters in Nigeria's maritime sector and the stakeholders, Prime Maritime Project welcome you to this very historical event. Today's event is the first in a series of town hall meetings being arranged by our team, PMP, Prime Maritime Project, to invite presidential candidates of the 18 political parties to undertake a social contract with critical maritime stakeholders. We must understand, however, however, congratulate the NNPP for leading the way in this novel move by PMP. Apart from being the gateway to the nation's economy, the net worth of this sector is estimated at about 91 trillion naira and can boast of no fewer than 15 million votes. Yes, we have 15 million votes in the maritime sector. If you engage us, we'll give to any candidate who is ready to sign a social contract with Maritime Nigeria will and give you 15 million votes. Now, why are we here? Why is this town hall meeting? While it is a truism that this sector is the most resourceful after oil and gas, and don't forget, the oil wells will dry one day. In fact, they are drying up. Sea never dries. So we have contributed so much to this economy. Regrettably, successive administrations have not accorded this industry its right place of in the, in the, in the, in the economy of this country. We have not been accorded the the right position we should occupy 
in the national economy. So we have continued to make ourselves a laughing stock in the Committee of Maritime Nations, with over 42 thriving subsectors which cut across shipbuilding, freight forwarding, haulage, docking, and a promising blue economy. It is the view of Prime Maritime Project that this sector holds the ace as the most beautiful bride of the 18 presidential candidates in the February 20, 2023 elections. That is why we want stakeholders present here to take this unique opportunity to make an appraisal of the, those issues which have remained unresolved over the years. For instance, why can't we have a separate Ministry of Maritime Affairs, Your Excellency? When you come into power, that will be the first thing the sector is expecting from you, is separate Ministry of Maritime Affairs. What is holding back the proposed National Transport Commission bill? Why has the Cabotage Vessel Financing Fund after 13 or 14 years of establishment, why are we not disbursing that fund? Why are our ports not linked by rail? Lekki Deep Sea Port will be commissioned next year. Next month, by the grace of God, there's no rail connectivity. Why do our ports suffer such a huge infrastructural decay? Mr. President, I can assure you that <laughs> no port manager, I mean no, no manager at the Marina House of the Nigerian Post Authority will be so proud to take a visiting head of state, port administrator from another country to go on tour of Tinkan and Apapa because it's an eyesore. It's an eyesore. Mr. President, we have paid lip service to this sector. And so the aim of this town hall meeting is to engage the NNPP as a political party and other presidential candidates to say, we now want to sign a social contract with you. It's a case of, you rob me, you rob my back, I rob your back. And one other thing that has bedeviled the sector is the issue of bringing politicians to head key agencies. When we go to meetings, international meetings, they look at us, they laugh at us. They use, we are not three. Yesterday, you brought a new, we introduced a new MD at Nigerian Post. Two days later, you are bringing under and all these are politicians. Every day, they keep learning. Every day, we keep teaching them. Look at them. Um, our able chairman, Otumba Kunle Folari. When they appoint them, they will run to him. I will go do this one. I will go do this one. He keeps teaching them, teaching them. Most of them fail to even learn before they are booted out. This must stop. The NNPP must stop this. on this premise, Indoc series stakeholders are seeking to drive up a process of advocacy that will elevate Nigeria's maritime industry to a matter of national priority. Therefore, as Nigerians prepared to elect another president to steer the affairs of the nation, stakeholders are unanimous in their quest to extract. We want to extract a social contract with the NNPP and other political parties. We are PMP are unequivocal that the voice of the maritime Nigeria will go a long way. Any candidate who is ready and prepared to enter any social contract with us will get our votes. And this is the reason we are gathered here to listen to the disposition of the new Nigerian People's Party. Will they sail in the new maritime order? NNPP, will you? engage in the new maritime order 
to enter into a social contract with Maritime Nigeria and say specifically this and this and this is what we will do for you if you, you, if you vote us in. We want to extract that contract with you, Your Excellency, before you leave here today. It's at this note that I now invite Otumba Kunle Folari, Chairman of the Post Consultative Council, who also doubles as the Chairman and Moderator of this event, to now come on and guide the way. Once again, you are welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, before Otumba takes uh, the microphone, Permit me to recognize some people who are here. Um, when I introduced Barisa Fred Akok here, I didn't complete. He has, he has so many caps. I only mentioned one. He's the Deputy National Legal Advisor of NMPP. Please, can we applaud him better? <laughs> we also have in our midst Dr. Abu Gilbert Major, the Pop National Policy Secretary of the party. Please, this applause is somehow quite short. Yeah, better, 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 better. Thank you very much. We also have Ladipo Johnson, National Auditor of the party. We also have in our midst Prince Ademola Ayuade, National Vice Chairman Southwest. By his dressing, you shall know them. Can we applaud him better? Thank you, sir. We have Mustafa Akazim, National Welfare Secretary. You are welcome, sir. We have Ambassador Mohamed Awal Musa, who is the National Youth Leader. Also, Prince Mweze Ono, Vice National Chairman, Southeast. Okay. We also have in our midst Apostle Adol Awan, governorship candidate, New Nigeria People Party, Ebony State. Please, as more people come, we continue to introduce them one after the other. Meanwhile, the Encyclopedia of Maritime will guide us as to how to proceed. Otumba, sir. Your Excellency, Distinguished Senator Kwakwanso, Rabiu Kwakwanso, Distinguished Members of the High Table, and stakeholders, I will not refer to them only as members of the new Nigerian People's Party, but entire stakeholders in Nigerian space. I'm bringing to you 50 years of my domain in the maritime sector. <laughs> Although I was born in Kano, but I was bred in Nigeria. The presidential candidate before us today has come to do a search and rescue mission. Indeed, a search and rescue mission because the maritime stakeholders, the maritime domain is tired of being an orphan. Your Excellency, please adopt us. Adopt us because we are orphans. Adopt us because we need a rescue plan a rescue plan that will make the maritime domain to be on the surface. What we need to do that is a maritime resource, economic, political, and social agenda. An action plan for the realization of the potential 
of this sector. When we talk of an action plan to search where we should be and to rescue us where we are so that we can grow and develop the economy and the political space of this country. Why are we saying that? We are saying that because Nigeria has the greatest potential in maritime in the whole of Africa. 54 countries in Africa, none has our population, none has our economy, none has our resources. Why are we not utilizing these resources and growing this economy? Your Excellency, you are going to be our Messiah. The previous government have promised, the previous government have promised, the previous government have promised, but they have not delivered. We want to be a part of those who benefit from the size of this economy. What is the size of this economy of the maritime people are talking about? 900 nautical miles of coastline, the largest in Africa. 200 exclusive economic zones, exclusive to us in Nigeria, our own, for fishing, for shipping, for every maritime activity. We are talking about 10 territorial waters for our defense. And I know the present candidate is good at defense. <laughs> we are also talking about 572 inland waterways for our people, for social interaction, for economic development and trade. Trade is important to our people. We are also talking about 10,000 kilometers of unnavigable waterways, which His Excellency will be persuaded to develop for us. Perhaps most of you don't know, why are we talking about water, maritime, with His Excellency? Because his entire career in the public service is in water. So he's coming with a background which he's familiar with. We may be lenient with other candidates, when we talk about water, we shall not be leading with him because he has an advantage. He has a huge advantage of being a water engineer. He has a huge advantage of having used water as a resource for the people he has governed before. That is why we are holding him by the throat. What are the things militating against my time? Somebody has talked about the size of the economy, 77, uh, 100 and something trillion. I think that is conservative. When you talk about water resources, don't look at the pots alone. What about the dams that provide water for electricity production? I believe His Excellency will use water resources to provide electricity for us. <laughs> what about water that provide irrigation for agriculture? I believe that His Excellency will utilize that for irrigation and agriculture. We need food. What about water for people to drink? I believe His Excellency will give us the roadmap. How is going to provide water for people to drink? Not only water, pure water. <laughs> Your Excellency, the presidential candidate, you are coming with a formidable credential, credential of career. Credential of politics, credential of social justice. And we expect this to deliver it to us in the maritime sector. That is why we are saying search and rescue. That is your mission. There are so many critical issues, and people who know me that I can speak for five hours. Yes, I've spoken at the United Nations. I've spoken in Geneva, I've spoken anywhere. I've lived in 36 countries in the world. And I know what they are using their water resources to achieve. Are we talking of Scandinavian countries? Are we talking of the Far East countries? Are we talking of the Philippines? 
Are we talking of Singapore? If you can't turn Nigeria into Dubai, turn into a Singapore. Because of this and because of time, we shall go straight to the subject matter. The critical issues to be addressed, an overview of the maritime sector, the new economic agenda. We need a new economic agenda in the maritime sector. We need attention to the littoral states. The littoral states in Nigeria are eight that are within the Atlantic Ocean. Why can't we take advantage of that? We have 16 functioning ports. We have concession of ports terminals. What have we gained from it? And what can we do to gain further from it? Now, the new economic agenda for the maritime sector. Your Excellency, we want a total port reform and local precision of policies. The stakeholders standing there don't want just to look. They want to take part in the fortunes of our maritime sector. They are said, don't they look? It's enough. They want the cabotage regime, which is the indigenous shipping element in our policy. This is where the Nigerians can afford to invest, can afford to participate, can afford to take part and gain. I don't forget that 70% of the economy of West and Central Africa is domiciled in Nigeria. If something is original in Congo, it must have been manufactured in Nigeria. Direct foreign investment policies. We want a workable direct investment policy, the DFI. We want incentive in the and transport sector. We want you to revisit the landlord model in port organization and to examine if indeed we are the landlord or the tenant. We want Griffith development, new horizon, new frontiers of maritime activity. That is what we want in Nigeria. We cannot have such a large space, large corridors of coastline, large population of people, large places of river and, and swamp areas we cannot develop. We want to be landlord and no more to be tenants. We want greenfield development. Greenfield development means new activity, new areas of endeavor. And we want a free trade zone that accommodates all and want all, all to be part of the reform. Your Excellency, you can see the reform and the, and the issue you are going to tackle and what you are going to search for us is enormous. Allah will be your helper. There are so many issues that are critical in the maritime sector. Your Excellency, you will get this list before you sign the contract so that you know what you are going to face. But we are going to be with every candidate that wants to take us to the promised land. Ports and harbors management. Maritime security and national defense, piracy and armed robbery at sea, microeconomic indicators, free trade zones restrictions, arbitrary imposition of free trade, we want it removed, dispute in insurance claim, we want it removed, excessive port charges, we want it removed, multiple intervention in clearing process, we want it removed, delays in industrial and manufacturing supply lines, we want it cancelled, difficulty in export documentation and contracts, Commercial and domestic import and export issues, import item prohibitions. Don't prohibit what you don't produce. <laughs> Commercial, industrial, and all gas cargo operations, limitation and barriers in case administration, unfavorable commercial terms, trade terms, options. And we all know Nigeria depends on export to get foreign currency. We also know 
that Nigeria exports more than 1.5 to 2 million barrels of oil a day. But what are the terms in the maritime sector of this operation? The cargo is shipped on FOB, but they bring back to us on CIF. That's a very unfavorable term of commercial trade that we don't want again. Foreign exchange, ac exchange access to shippers. A few days ago, the airline said they were not coming again because we are not be able to repatriate the foreign exchange they have earned. Shippers are buying foreign exchange in the black market. At what cost? And at what landing cost? At what unit cost to the consumers of imported goods? So we have to manage the foreign exchange access to shippers. Shippers in the crowd, your savior has come. Then, I've tried to restrict this to almost about 16 or 18. There are about 42 items. We want to tackle, finally, the international agencies. The international agencies regard Nigeria as destination for dumping. It must stop. Whether it's from China, whether it's from Europe, whether it's from Africa, Nigeria cannot be a dumping ground for any service, for any goods. How we are going to proceed is according to the program. But I will advise that when it comes to an interaction, come out, come out with your feelings, come out with your own agenda so that the Messiah can hear. And when he signs a social contract, he'll be aware of the critical issues we have outlined in the Maritime Domain. Your Excellency, Distinguished Senator Rabbi Fuakanso, Professor Kali, the chairman of the party, of the new Nigeria party, the chairman of the new Nigeria. We want to call you new Nigeria before we call you a party. Because you are going to overturn in our own sector what we believe is elusive, what we believe can, we cannot see. Because tomorrow morning, we want to see a new dawn, and we believe the new Nigerian party will give us that new dawn. Thank you. Please, can we do it better for Otumba? Yes. While we are demanding for new Nigeria, we also are demanding for new attitude here. Please, if you have your phone and you have not put it in a silence mood, please do so to avoid distractions. Um, I want to recognize the presence of the person I should even regard as the chief host of this event. The chairman of NMPP Lagos State. Chief Adesa Falade, please. Omo Eko Pataki. A round of applause again for him. Because if we don't recognize him and he gets angry, he can walk us out from this place. I also recognize the presence of architect Bashir Muhammad Abacha. National Liaison Officer. In our midst also is Barrister Robert Horn, National Legal Advisor. What's our large Mushud Shitu, leader of NMPP in Kwara State? Shakespeare Gilo Caesar says, the things that touch us most shall be last served. I deliberately decided not to mention somebody's name until now. He's one of our own. In fact, we loaned him to NMPP, a journalist of note, who is today the secretary 
of NMPP. Doctor Deko Olayoku, the general. They say the trumpet are also licks his lips. Uh, the prime maritime project is being driven by three people. I also need to introduce them, so I, in case you, you see them. Of course, the MD of the company, Ed Asubex, has been here. We have the man who is in charge of administration and um, communication sitting over there, Comrade Kinsley Anaroke. He's a publisher of a known, a known publication in the industry, MMS Plus. And my humble self, Ray Ugochuku, also a journalist. You didn't clap for me well. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So before we continue, the, the, chairman, the chairman and the moderator has outlined some of the needs of the industry. Your Excellency, sir, as you are coming on board, I don't know, it will interest you to get to a place called Apapa Port. It's an eyesore. Before government concession the post in 2006, to clear a container in, a, in the port, 7,000, 8,000. But today, for sure, nobody can tell actually how, how much it costs to clear a container. To give you an insight, sir, before 2016, truck drivers could make the four trips within Lagos, and they were charging 5,000 naira per container. But today, to move a container from Tinkan to Bode Thomas, a distance of less than five kilometers, costs about 400,000. Why? It will take the truck owner about one month to return to the port. That is what we are going through. There was a case of an exporter from Meduguri last year that had a truck of ginger. It took him three days to get to, uh, to Maitu and one month to get into Tinkan port. That is the situation. That is why I want a paradigm shift. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, somebody will also come to give a background of what we are doing here. Please mind your movement. I told you this event is being covered live. You are blocking the camera at the back. Please, can you make way? So I'm inviting to the podium the great man of the industry, the freight forwarder general of Nigeria maritime industry, who does not like what is happening in Nigeria. Before now, before the confusion started in the ports, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Chad, they were routing their cargo through a papa port. But today, because of the confusion, all of them have moved to Tema Port in Ghana. If you go to Ghana, you see dedicated terminals for Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Chad. That is big money we are losing. Must we continue like that? So I want to, on behalf of all of you, invite Dr. Boniface and Abraham to the podium. Dr. Sir. All right, thank you, thank you. Your Excellency. Um, Otumba. And my good friend, uh, Buba Galadima. 
let me rest down now other existing protocols. Well, I'm here to tell you people why we are here. If you have the program, you see that I'm supposed to say why we are here. Let me start by saying that uh, the organizers of this program made it very clear for all of you to understand that this process is open to other political parties. In Nigeria, there are 18 political parties, and New Nigeria People's Party is one of them. Now, they have a program to bring in all the presidential candidates to enter into social contracts with the port operators and stakeholders. What they are saying is that they do not want the old order. They want a new order. And that's an agreement they want to enter into, and they use the word social contract. Yes, I'm here to tell all of you that among the 18 political parties, your own political party is New Nigeria People's Party. Why? This is the time to change approach. In the military, you say that when there is a system collapse, tactics takes over. There is a system collapse in our country, and tactics has to take over. And that means that we must deploy a maneuver to raise power, to give a new order, to give new direction to Nigerianness. The frustration is too much. And it's not the time to blame anybody. It is time to change a new order. In our party, it's a consensus. We are not out to join issues with anybody. And that is why you will see the new Nigeria People's Party on the focus. You will not hear anything to the contrary. We won't be here to castigate anybody. We will not. Anybody that does that in our party will have to leave us. We are at home because we have a presidential candidate that do not have any baggage. We are here because we have a child of God ordained to provide leadership in our country, and that's Neto Aliu Konkwesu. <laughs> Let me tell all of you, 2023 market, it is ordained that a leader will emerge. <laughs> and it's as simple as ABC, you have to understand that. NMPP is 21 years certain, operating quietly, setting up structures. In the last three, four months, those structures were powered. And that reminds me the statement accredited to Ojo Zokalo when he said, that the emergence of Senator Kwan Kwaso has changed the narratives of politics in Nigeria. Did you see that on channel? What does that mean? And it shows you the man we are talking about. As a chieftain of PDP, chieftain of APC, yet he took that decision, he had that courage to leave these establishments that are filled up with milk and honey 
and descend down to be part of a process that will reinvent Nigeria of our dreams. It's all about sacrifice. And I want you to be part of this journey of a new Nigeria. Now, don't ask me how it will happen. It's going to happen because it's ordained by God. And I am there as a spiritual leader. New Nigeria People's Party came together with NAGAF. NAGAF came in 1999, NMPP came in 2000. We have completed the assignment of liberation struggle among the freight forwarders and logistic operators. And that led to the emergence of Council for the Regulation of Freight Forwarding. And we went to profile professional standards of freight forwarders of Nigeria to belong to the noble profession that we have achieved through an act of the National Assembly. As I speak to you, all the freight forwarders of Nigeria have been liberated, but there is a law. The second leg of this journey is a new Nigeria through a political platform. And that journey will be concluded 2023. That will be the emergence of Senator Kwan as the President of the Federal Republic. <laughs> now, why am I here? Hold me responsible, the maritime stakeholders. The world is less fight from inside. Hold me responsible. The social contract will be you and the NMPP to enter into a responsible partnership, meaning that we have to go and work. We have to work because power is not given. Power is taken or negotiated. Under the circumstance, we got to work. We have to. The concept we have right now is, I give you an example. A lot of Nigerians walk into banks. I pick up form, fill your form, I begin to deposit money in that bank. The bank even turn around to charge you COT. But the truth is that before you put your money in a bank, you should ask what are the facilities available to you before you can put your money in a bank because they are going to use your money to trade. Now, for NMPP, it's not about Senator Kwan Kwaso coming up here to tell us about the maritime agenda for New Nigeria People's Party. Yes, that's all right. The political party should have that, the manifesto, that's good. But we are here, and that's why we are here. To tell him what we want him to do for us. We have suffered so much. If he agrees, we go to work. And we are not going to work and work from outside. We are going to work and work from inside. <laughs> what is not available to other political parties is available here. What is it? I am the founder of the party. I am the chairman board of trustee of the party. And above all, I'm the spiritual leader of the party. What will happen is that hold me responsible. The most important thing you need in any administration is to have access to governance. Have access to government. Oh, do you think that if Kwan Kwaso become president, you, you just come to Nagav, you want to speak to him now. I, I said, tell him to call me. He will call me. <laughs> and and, and, and you, your problem is solved. Is it not true? 
So why do you not talk about other political parties? We will give it to the moderators or those operators because they are not politicians. They are professionals. And that's why they are mentioning other political parties. Does it make sense? If you go and host other political parties, who will you talk to at the appropriate time? <laughs> Nobody now. So you are just building a castle on a shifting sand. This is where we will build our castle. Now, let me go specific. One simple example. I am from the southeastern part of the country. Am I right? I must extract matters that has to do with trade and commerce. I must sit down with Kwan to discuss that. If we have not done so. That is the, I know that my people are majorly involved in international trade. And so I, I must know, you must tell me. But I want to tell our people from the southeastern part of the country, we can't get it right other than now. I shall be speaking from the ports as somebody who had a stay with the customs. I am conversant and familiar with international trade. I am conversant and familiar with logistics. And I know the level of damage, the investments at the port and at the entry points for things that are avoidable. I won't say much on that. Those who know what I'm talking. They know what I'm talking about. That must be addressed by New Nigeria People's Party. <laughs> and, and the good news is that my presidential candidate, I, I can't say more than this, he loved Ibo so much. <laughs> Ibo when? Ibomwon, yeah. Zon, yeah. Kachan, yeah. Mr. President, the time is up. Be rest assured that the 10, 15 million votes at maritime transport, entry points of the seaports, airports, and land borders. We will do everything possible to galvanize and mobilize because we know that with you, a lot of resolutions will be made. Not to change much. And finally, I want to say that social contract can be written, can be oral. It's neither here nor there. What is there is the spirit. What I'm telling everybody here in the maritime stakeholders environment right now, hold me responsible. I shall hold you responsible to ensure that we get him through. And when it gets to implementation, be rest assured that most of you will be involved. We know what it is. We know what we want. And we cannot longer operate from outside. We have to operate from inside. And we have to work for you. Thank you very much. Let's give me a standing, a standing ovation. Standing ovation. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. In summary, 
what, the, what Dr. Anebunah had just said is, he, whose father is in heaven, does not go to hell. That is summary. Please, can we applaud him better? We have in our midst, because we give honor to whom honor is due. We have in our midst, Lady Chinyere of Okansi, woman leader, Southeast. Also, Esther Takobi, woman leader, Lagos State. The bulldozer. Okay. Uh. Okay. Lagos State. I hope you bulldoze everything. We also have here with us Chief Dr. Jackal Kazim, Deputy Governorship Candidate, NMPP, Ogun State. I saw somebody who walked in, the president of Computer Village Technological Market, Tony Wakeze. Is he still around? Okay. Um, very soon we shall go for tea break. But before we do that, the chairman of NMPP is here, where seated, and I learned he arrived Lagos yesterday. He also give us the angle of the party on what we are doing today. This social contract that has to do with maritime town hall, town hall meeting. Please may we welcome to the podium <laughs> Professor Akali. Please, may I invite all members of the National Working Committee here present to join me on the podium. All members of the National Working Committee, including our great women, women leaders from Anambara State, from Lagos, because we came all the way in solidarity with our president. Already their names have been mentioned, but now you can see them one by one. Your Excellency, our great leader, our presidential candidate, uh, Senator Dr. Engineer Arabia Musa Konkoso. Uh, he has a PhD, so just not a doctor of philosophy, honoris causa, but a, a PhD holder by right. The chairman of BOT, Dr. Boniface and Obinam, who has just spoken and spoken very well. Our brother here, Engineer Buba Galadima, who is also part of the maritime industry, I believe. He is the secretary of the BOT, the chairman of the occasion, Otumba Tunde Folarin. the National Secretary of a great party, the General, and all other members of the Working Committee here present. Our governorship candidates and their running mates who are also here with us and the members of the National Assembly who have joined this great occasion. The movers and shakers of the maritime industry who today has shaken the whole country with these statistics, facts and figures about the reality of the Nigerian situation, distinguished special guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I thought before I should go further, we'll go back to what 
Chief Folarin has said, Otumba Folarin, he virtually moved a motion for the adoption of Sintu Rabi Musa Konkoso as the president of Nigeria come 2023. I believe that motion was also seconded by our elder and leader, the chairman of BOT, Chief Boniface Aniabunam. <laughs> so shall we now pose the question, those who are in support of Central Rabbi Musa Konkoso as the president of Nigeria 2023, can you say aye? Aye! No, I am not too sure Senator Konkoso has had that one. He has not had it at all. Let me repeat the motion again. Let me, the, 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 I'm calling that those who are in support of the motion by following and seconded by Anebunam, can you say aye? Aye! Those who want to say no, can you say nay? They are not here. Thank you very much. You can go and sit there if you like. You can go, you can go and sit there if you like. Well, if you like, we can stand. Okay, you can stand if you like. Thank you very much. Yes, if you like, you can stand. When uh, Chief Boniface, the chairman of BOT, was talking about Ibequenu, he was, he was only saying for Ibequenu. But I think we should go further. Ibe Kwenu? Yeah. Yoruba Kwenu? Yeah. Hausa Kwenu? Yeah. Nigeria Kwenu? Yeah. Mamanu? 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 There are, there is, I think the story of NAPP is well known. There are two arms to it. And one is what? The chairman BOT has been saying repeatedly that he had a vision that he must establish a political party and put it in reserve, knowing and aware that they, a day will come when a shining star will emerge in this country who will take over this party and finally use it to liberate this country. For the past 21 years, he was nursing this political party, the new Nigeria People's Party, very quietly funding it patiently. As he was also having that vision, another visionary leader also emerged in the person of Dr. Rabiu Musa Konkoso. Way back before Easter last year, he was worried. He was concerned. He was disturbed that Nigeria was drifting. Nigeria is, was facing and is still facing existential crisis. Things that we never knew would happen in our own lifetimes were happening. The killings the distractions, the break of communication between groups and communities. Indeed, the beginning of loss of hope, both in the system, in the country, and in ourselves. That was the time when he rose up and said, no, we cannot allow things to continue drifting beyond this point. And that's why at that time he invited his friends and associates Say, look, let's sit down and talk about Nigeria. Let's talk about the future of Nigeria. Let's talk about our people. Because posterity will never forgive us that after seeing all this trouble going on, we keep quiet. Or we hide under our beds for fear that if we talk, something will happen to us. That it, that was the beginning. And uh, you won't believe in a period of just four, five months, that committee of friends and associates metamorphosed, expanded, 
grew up to become a new movement, unprecedented in the history of this country, which brought everybody across the country from every part of the country. At that time, when this movement was brought up, he was also emphatic that it's open to every Nigerian. Whether you are PDP, you are APC, you are no party at all, you belong to some of these mushroom political parties, any person, let's join us together. And uh, our purpose and objective was to give everybody a chance. And we did just that. By February 22nd, you must have been aware that National Movement was formally launched in Abuja. It's a very big fanfare in which Nigerians told themselves that now we are on the path of change. Genuine change. Not somebody who promises his change and did not give you a cash and did not give you a change. You know, we here in Lagos, you know what it means when you enter Danfo or Molwe and you refuse to pay change to your driver or the conductor, that day you know there'll be katakata on the street. But today, most of us have been uh, uh, changed and we are still keeping quiet. We have not used Danfo uh, culture. But I think people are beginning to learn that we must use the Danfo culture also to get our change back from those who collected our money. Let me say, immediately after the launching of the TNM, the biggest challenge was that it was not enough to have a national movement as important as it was. You must go a step further. Because in the absence of a political platform that can galvanize support for all Nigerians, there is no way you can make sense and make, become relevant. And that is why we all went into prayers. In the next eight days, between 22nd of February to 1st of March, we made all the contacts. Central Rabbi Musa Konkoso never slept. He never rested. He's all the people around him. You must look for a political platform. Of course, there were so many political part platforms. When you hear some of them, they don't look like political parties. They look like, uh, you know, names of a, a product you see on the supermarket. Let me lower my voice. There is a political party called Boot Party. But we were ready to go for any political party at that time. We just wanted to have a political party that share our ideals, our vision, our mission, our commitment to liberate our country. And that is how, again, God guided Dr. Rabbi Musa Konkoso and his team to look around. After many people who attempted to march with us, we realized that we did not belong to us and there was no way they could serve our purpose. Because they were looking at different things. And that's how God shows us the way to go to Anambara State and look for a man who had the dream long time ago, 20 years back, in the passing of Chief Boniface Anebunam. <laughs> he was waking up in the middle of the night and most of the people who went there had to also go in camouflage because if you go to Southeast at that time with your house of Babariga, you may not come back with that Babariga if you come back at all. <laughs> and he was asked, we are here to see you. And what is the question he said? We said we need a better Nigeria, a future Nigeria that we can be proud of, a country we can take back to our children and grandchildren. He said, is that your problem? He said, yes, sir. He said, you have gotten the new Nigeria People's Party. <laughs> and it has been said repeatedly for record purposes, he never asked for a CC. I think in, you, in Yoruba we say Shishi. In Hausa we say CC. No Kobo was asked from us to say we want to form this political party. We did the merger on 1st of March this year, 1st March. Because that was the last day for Maja under the rules of the INEC. Your Excellency, sir, I'm saying all this because I want people to understand the history 
of the evolution of the new movement now we are having and which is going to liberate everybody, including the maritime industry. <laughs> Within the next 15 days, in March, the new leadership, the caretaker committee had to do what? We had to have a caretaker committee at the national level, we did it at the state level, we did it at local government level, and then we did it at the world level. And almost immediately started the, prior, the Congress for the election of national officers. Again, from world level, to local government level, to state level, to zonal level, and to national level. In 30 days between 1st March and 30th of March, we had a new leadership of NMPP. <coughs> I didn't hear you say anything. Clap for yourself in that case. <laughs> Appreciate yourself that in 30 days, it never happened in the history of Nigeria to give a new party, a new face, a new direction, new leadership. And that is how it happened. And then he himself, the former chairman of the party, agreed that he can be the chairman BOT because we say, sir, you, cannot, uh, you are not tired and you are not retired. You are the spirit behind the party. You must remain there. And that is also how Senator Rabi Musa Konkos also emerged as the national leader of the party. So you could see the new Nigeria People's Party is rooted in the national movement for the liberation of our country. <laughs> and almost immediately after the 30th of March, which was Wednesday, by the time we crossed the weekend, we started now the issue of preparation for primaries because primary was supposed to start on 4th of April, and I can assure you, none of us slept. Nobody slept. All of us standing here. We fought and followed the rules by INEC, textbook approach, so that we are not left behind. And then we are able to have the entire processes done. And by the last few days, we have concluded all our primaries. Today, NMPP has governorship candidates. We have National Assembly candidates, we have House of Assembly candidates, and over and above we have a presidential candidate, a man that can stand shoulder to shoulder anywhere in this country. <laughs> Not only that, he also went further to go and choose one of the youngest men in the country, a man of God, who is an intellectual in his own right, Bishop Isaac Odalsa. To become his running mate. <laughs> While some people are still thinking of going to their homes and villages to collect their brothers to make them running mates, we are looking for Nigeria as a whole so that it can be inclusive. No section of this country should be left behind. No constitution should be left behind. So, so far now we have done our best and today NMPP is the fastest growing party in this country. <laughs> Therefore, I want to commend the chairman BOT for organizing this befitting occasion. We had been planning to come to Lagos, but as God would have it again, we started with this journey, which is a very glorious journey. We are starting to see the maritime industry with all the very beautiful ideas they have. Personally, I never knew the whole thing was so bad until it has been narrated by following. So therefore, we are here. We want to welcome, thank you. We want to thank the media and thank our colleagues. Please remember, other parties are not leaving us alone. The media, I want to urge you, whenever you hear any story that you are not sure of, call us. We'll explain to you. There was a time when they saw we were growing very fast. They say NMPP has been deselected by Air INEC. We told them that you are dreaming. God did not deselect NMPP, and nobody can deselect NMPP. Now they say NMPP is a small party. We say, well, it's a small party, but a very mighty party. <laughs> Today, they also say we are, we are, we are a regional party. Did you see NMPP being a regional party at all? No, no I, I didn't hear that answer. No. I didn't hear this answer. No. NMPP 
is not a personal party, it's a regional, it's not a regional party, it's a national party, a cosmopolitan party, a party that is ready to make sure that the issue of security, education, economy, welfare of Nigerians are taken care of, inshallah. And I think with the endorsement today, the journey has started. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The national chairman deserves something better, 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 better. I, 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 I call somebody's name and his designation wrongly. Chief Dr. Jackie Kasim is a chieftain of NMPP from Ogo State. Please, can we applaud him? We have in our midst here the house to house campaign group of NMPP Southwest, ably led by Azik Morenkeji, who is the National Secretary. You are very much welcome. Before His Excellency comes to the podium, I sat to know, for him to know how to present his facts, I want him to listen to an academician, somebody who has done a lot of research on maritime. He has traveled far. He has conducted a lot of survey on maritime. He wants to use like five minutes to educate us a little on some of the challenges of the industry. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I hereby call on Professor Dele Badejo of the State University to come to this podium. Prof, sir, please can we applaud him as he comes to this podium. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to stand on the already established protocol, but I will single out His Excellency, Dr. Senator Rabi Musa Kwakwaso, my secretary in the office, which is Mrs. Rabi. But every day, I call her Kwakwaso. <laughs> and I am meeting His Excellency Kwakwaso live and direct for the first time today. Thank you very much for the privilege. My secretary once asked me, Oga, why do you call me Kwakwaso all the time? I said, because if you have ever seen His Excellency Kwakwaso, is always in a smiling mood. And this, my secretary, is always in a smiling mood. So I am not disappointed. Uh, I won't take too much of our time because my presentation has been seriously uh, battered in terms of timing. But I'll still try to manage and deliver something more important. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about sustainable maritime development agenda. That is, the NNPP is to set up its own agenda for the Nigerian maritime development sector. Ladies and gentlemen, we listen to what Otumba Polari, who happened to be my teacher too, and I'm always learning along with him. And it's also a long time I saw engineer Buba Galadima when he was in LME. I was his small teacher at last then. 
and I used to visit him. What I want to say is that as a political party, as a new uh, barometer for measuring Nigeria's future growth, you are talking of providing qualitative and quality education, providing access to good health, improving our road infrastructure, improving on our agriculture by raising and uh, increasing our food supply. All these efforts and dreams depend on one important factor. governments have relied heavily on borrowings through multilateral and bilateral options. And today, Nigeria is one of the highest debtors for many countries globally. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one sector that can erase all those our fear of meeting up all these our commitments to Nigerians and using foreign investments, borrowed monies to get all these things done. The major error what I want. You just bring investment to the corner of my house without me knowing that something is coming. You don't know the plans we already established for that place. You say, yes, I have talked for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank the NNPP for taking it bold to approach the stakeholders of the industry to plan along with them, to reason along with them, so that you can come out with a fine document through which Nigeria will be addressed. What about sir? Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, Tax Excellency, the benefits associated to the industry are clearly established in the slide which I have provided. It provides alternative modes of transportation. 28 states of, the Nigeria, of Nigeria can be accessed by water from Lagos, Port Harcourt, Calabar, or Wari. 28 states. Meaning that total dependence on road mode or rail mode at times can be so worrisome, can be so stressful. When the road, I mean, when the waterway does not need any repair, does not need any clearing, as long as it is maintained from time to time. Promotion of trade and commerce. Revenue generation. If you look at the amount of revenue we are losing for not developing the maritime industry, it's so enormous that if we can tap between 15 and 20 percent of those losses, definitely, like Otuba said, if Nigeria cannot be like Dubai, it should be like uh, Singapore. Others include promoting seamless international relationship, promoting global peace, helping to advance cross-cultural relationship. If you go to any of our ports, that is where you come across different tribes, different culture in Nigeria. You may go to a particular ministry and don't come across more than two or three uh, ethnic groups, but when you go to the port, you will see virtually every uh, Nigerian culture is being present there. That is why you see that cultural relationship is quite high. And that is where the process of peace can be initiated. 
This is not to say that efforts have not been made to develop our maritime sector. Serious efforts have been made, but it is one step forward, two, three steps backward. Like I wrote in my paper, it is not well with the maritime industry. Outcomes of these various efforts shows that the industry is still very far away from where it is expected to be. It is on this ground that we are pleading that the social contract with NPP should be seen with great enthusiasm. In order to provide the bedrock through which NPP who are advanced to pursue all the other programs set to achieve with the maritime industry will easily provide the resources and finance that are require, required for it. The major challenge that I always tell people is that if you wake up in the morning, you know where you are going. You know the reason where you are doing that. We don't have any maritime development policy document. As long as you don't have a, a document to guide you, to direct you, you are just like someone who is being blown here and there by air like a cotton In other words, sir, there is need as you are, as you are interacting with stakeholders, as you are having a handshake between the various maritime practitioners, obviously they will guide you in pro producing what I may call a maritime development policy document. And this document, when fully produced, it will now make the implementation more seamless, more easy. Then, there is something, as a researcher, is that we depend excessively on foreign consultants. I, can, I doubt, in the number of times, any of the Nigerian government or industry have consulted with uh, Otuba Folan. We are very close. But I will tell you that he will receive invitation from outside the country to come and deliver. What we have in Nigeria is what we call QBE, sir. Qualified by experience. His Excellency is well versed about water. He has been a water engineer. When he was in Kano, he delivered water. So there is nothing you want to tell him about water. He will tell you what is meant by drought of left water, how the water comes, the purity of water, and so on. But when you now bring someone that is not qualified, someone who studied history, who studied, because he studied law, does not qualify that person as an expert of maritime. But what we believe is that I'm a lawyer, I'm a, I'm a geographer, I'm this. You need to expose yourself to critical knowledge seeking. You remember when the BOT chair was saying that uh, some people, no sooner they are engaged, they are being deployed again. They are being disengaged. So, the, the, in the process of learning, they are being disengaged. So what is the essence of that learning and so on? So, I want to appeal that this development policy document must be seen as a top priority. It is necessary because it will act as the compass for development of the maritime industry. And it will also post help to achieve the objectives of government in other sectors of the economy where funding and quality human resources is a serious challenge. The way forward. I will summarize the way forward in just one sentence. We need what I call maritime infrastructure development master plan. That master plan, when it is developed, it will, it will give us what you call immediate action, short-term action, medium-term action, and long-term action. We don't need to commence our correction of the maritime industry through a long-term process. Because the government has its own time dimension. So it must try to factor what are achievable within the time frame of that administration. So what I'm just trying to say is that there are quick, quick, quick issues that could be responded to 
that you don't even need to go for one year or three months. For example, we have what you call inadequate port channels and bad drought limitations. You can deploy expansion there. Aging and vandalization of port infrastructure. Port, poor port lightly in all the ports. By the time it is 7 o'clock, there is no light again. So actions, activities, operations are limited. What does it cost to provide electricity to encourage 24-hour uh, business? That's what you call, let us complete the automation. The automation is being stored. What can we do to fast track the process of automation so that we can develop a one-stop shop for all this shipping activity? What about poor ports access road? We've been on the decongestion of the port access roads in the last 10, 12 years. How long will it take to decongest? A meaningful government will be able to do something and respond immediately. Inadequate port infrastructure. It may be a long time, but invariably we need all these things. Finally, sir, I want to encourage that we really conduct what is called research and development. When, my, when everybody was talking about we will deliver 15 million votes, we will deliver 10 million votes, the question that was raking in my mind is that do we have all this information that we could use to assess what we are doing? On that note, I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Badejo. Please, can we applaud him better? <laughs> um, distinguished uh, members of the audience, members of the high table, please, I want to crave your indulgence. If you look at our program, provision is made for tea break. But because we are on a live transmission, we cannot cut the transmission. So please bear with us. We can assure you because we are working on time. So we are likely going to have brunch, that breakfast and lunch together. So you can, you can use a, a bottle to drink your tea. It's allowed. May I recognize the presence of Honorable Mustafa Dabri, Senatorial Candidate, NMPP, Lagos West. You are welcome, sir. Also welcome the Naga spokesman for the Chukwemeka Iwebuna. Of course, one of our own, Mrs. Abiola Beckley, Vice Chairman, Lagos NUJ. We have a man who has been violating the affairs of educating free forwarders in Nigeria, the first of its kind. Naga has an academy that educates free forwarders. This man is the registrar. He has been pioneering the affairs. Please, can we welcome to, the, to this gathering for the Francis Omotosho. <laughs> we also have a vice beauty chairman, engineer Fabian Okafo. We also have engineer Mrs. Benedicta. Dub Dubuti. Um, governorship candidate, deputy governorship candidate of Ebony State, NMPP. His Excellency, sir, I know you might be feeling bored. Um, you know, the Iroko tree, the Iroko tree is so high that you can't climb on it always. So my people say, anytime you have opportunity to climb the Iroko tree, you gather as much firewood as possible, but make sure you don't kill the Iroko tree. Very soon, sir, will be, will be done. On that note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, so many people have spoken. You still have time to interact with the, uh, His Excellency. May we now give him audience to, for him to have a say. Let's hear from him before you continue. But before then, uh, I will have a handshake with him. When Obasanjo came to my village in 2003, I had a handshake with a woman. That woman never used that hand again until she died. She became a lefty. 
She didn't want to soil that hand again. So I'm going to have a handshake with her. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please get seated. Thank you very much. The chairman of this occasion, Otumba Kule Polarin. Our respected chairman of the Board of Trustees, chairman of our party, the secretary, other senior officials of our party here present, the lead presenter, Professor Bamidele Badijo, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here today in the midst of distinguished men and women who form the pillar sustaining the economy of our country. Your various roles in international shipping trade and transport, logistics cannot be overemphasized. I am delighted to honor your invitation and to participate in this important conversation and to share with you some of my thoughts with regards to the Nigeria's maritime industry. I am optimistic that being here today and listening to this cream of stakeholders of this all important industry will help in no small way in our efforts to tackle the challenges of the sector immediately we are voted into office in 2023. <clears throat> Let me begin by commending Prime Maritime Project the initiators of this innovative and wonderful idea. I understand some experienced and senior journalists are behind it. I also commend all of them. It is the first of its kind in the country and is in fact a paradigm shift from the norm. I also commend your efforts of holding public offices account accountable, a responsibility that is key to the success of the fourth estate of the realm. I also doff my heart for the National Association of Government Approved Freight Forwarders, NAGAF, The, thank you. The initiator of our great party for powering this novel idea. It is a visionary and patriotic thinking of Nagav that maritime trade should deserve a better pride or place in the polity that resulted in the emergence of the LNPP in 2001. Of course, I cannot talk of Nagav and the LNPP without a mention of the spiritual leader, the founder of both entities, a great man of note, Dr. Boniface Okechuku, Anebunam, who incidentally is also the chairman of our party's board of trustees, BOT. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. May the God Almighty continue to bless you for your vision and foresight. My being here today is out of personal conviction that the maritime sector is a critical element to the growth, survival, and prosperity of Nigeria. Again, anybody who forgets his root will never go far in life. The maritime industry gave birth to our great party, the NNPP. As such, I cannot disregard any invitation for whatever reason coming from the sector. <laughs> so, my being here is largely to listen, appreciate, and understand the expectations of maritime operators from me uh, and our party uh, should we eventually emerge winners of the 2023 general elections. Though I may not have been fully involved in maritime sector to understand its nitty gritty, but my experience over the years as a former Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps, former Governor, former Minister of Defense, and a former Senator has availed me to some basic understanding of the sector and especially some of its challenges. I have listened to this wonderful audience and have noted your expectations. I can tell you that I'm aware of most of the challenges facing the sector presently. One of such, for instance, is congestion on port access road in Apapa. It may interest you to know that in one of my visits to Lagos some time ago, I was in Apapa and was stunned at the uh, spectacle of articulated trucks lining the Ijora Bridge. To me, it was an unacceptable ISO in a 21st century Nigeria. I was even made to understand that I came when things had improved. This is highly unacceptable. It goes to show that we rarely plan for the future. A port system originally designed for a population of less than 50 million people in the 1950s with less than 2 million cargo through, uh, throughput has remained almost the same for more than 200 million population in 2022. When a country's population is increasing at a, geomet a geometric progression and port infrastructure remains static, the resultant effect is chaos. To me, that is the cause of the Ijora Bridge, Debaku, and other issues. So many things have gone wrong with the industry. I can still remember the days of the Nigerian shipping line, NNSL, with its beautiful ships flying Nigeria's flag across the globe. Why did it die? Why do we not have a replacement as the giant of Africa? What has become of the Cabotage Vessel Financing Fund, CVFF? Why has it not been disbursed uh, to beneficiaries? From my little knowledge of the sector, a lot of questions are being begging for answers. It is also my desire 
to see that the customs and other regulatory agencies must be made to perform efficiently and effectively. The observed high level corruption in the system has to be tackled to improve the productivity in the ports. Again, it is worth it here to make mention of effective border checks and control to system the tide of smuggling and its related security implications. Indeed, the entry points of Nigeria shall attract the desired attention of our administration if elected as the president. In summation, the desired assistance to all importers of goods, manufacturers, including exporters and other ancillary stakeholders associated with port operations and management will be guaranteed under our party's regime by the special grace of God. <laughs> Suffice it to say that NNPP as a party has its blueprint for the economy for which maritime and transport logistics are incorporated. You are all aware that I was a founding member of both the PDP and the APC, the two parties that govern the country in the last 23 years. I decided to make the sacrifice of doing away with both parties because both of them have derailed from the original vision set forth for them. Both of them have failed woefully in putting Nigeria and Nigerians first. Both of them have failed woefully. Oh, um, both of them have brought untold economic hardship to Nigerians. Both of them have visited Nigerians with unacceptable level of insecurity ever imagined. And both of them have failed to provide qualitative and competent leadership that is dearly needed to steer the ship of the Nigerian nation to unity and prosperity. If these failures are not there, if the expectations of Nigerians had been met, if the leaders are competent, patriotic and sincere, we would not have been where we are today. This is why I have decided to seek to be at the driving seat of this nation through the NNPP so that those expectations, a new Nigeria of our dream, can be realized. <laughs> so really for us, the choice in 2023 general election is clear. A new and better Nigeria that the NNPP is forced to put in place or the continuation of the status quo. We believe that Nigerians are tired of the status quo and are very eager to do away with both the APC and the PDP. As I said earlier, the NNPP as a blueprint of the economy Maritime sector inclusive. However, having been here today and hearing you out, I have found out that more work needs to be done in the sector. I'm therefore using this forum to solicit for your support so that I can emerge the winner of 2023 general election. I would like to request this stakeholders forum to form the nucleus of the group that will be responsible for designing a workable and actionable maritime sector reform template, which should include clearance of goods arriving at our ports 
within 72 hours as done in other countries tackling piracy within your our territorial waters and the entire gulf of guinea clearing of our ports of pollution because of discharge from ships our government will look into the position of constructing a rail line both uh, from apapa and tinkan island ports to a dry port area outside lagos where arrived goods should be domiciled for clearance in order to stop heavy trucks from causing a gridlock in lagos we should also look into the possibility of opening other ports <clears throat> such as wari port harcourt kalaba etc in order to decongest lagos port in addition i can assure you that it will no longer be business as usual under our watch maritime professionals will take charge of the maritime sector <laughs> distinguished guests let me end this short remark by assuring you that no individual has all the answers the operators of the maritime industry know where it pinches the most and certainly have their insider perspective on how best to revamp the sector we will continue to tap into that insider knowledge to have better understanding of the challenges so as to continue to fine tune our proposed policies in the end we must all agree that this very important sector must be back on its feet and must be given the chance to support the growth and development of our country in the overall interest of our citizens thank you and god bless you all please let's let's continue to applaud him thank you thank you please can we be seated um have elia mentioned his name before but he was somehow absent the chairman bot of nagav forward achidebere enelama is here with us please can you wave to the audience you are welcome sir i also want to uh, let us know that members of a sister association the association of nigerian licensed custom agents anaka are fully represented here. They are led by Chief Ojo, who is the chairman Tinkan Island Port Chapter of Anaka. Please, um, please, can we welcome him and his team? You are welcome, sir. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are two mics. There, there, there's another one. Check, check. There's, there are two mics. Let me. There are two mics. One is on the table there. Uh, two mics. Now we are going into the nitty gritty of why we're here. Stakeholders, this is your turn to. The please the the hot. The hotel should make available another microphone.
week. So the stakeholders, this is your time to interact. Within the next 15 minutes, we should be through. Please, may I warn or may I caution us that all questions, all reactions, please one house. Can we have one house, please? All questions, all reactions should be centered on why we are here. The issue of maritime, that's why we are here. Anything political, please, it will not be entertained. At the appropriate time, you can do that. For now, we're here for maritime. That's maritime stakeholders meeting. That's why we're here. So this is the time to interact. I now hand over the microphone to the chairman and moderator, Otumba Kunle Folari. Uh, can we all be seated? Your Excellency and the Excellencies in waiting. We have had the oracle has spoken. The presidential candidate has spoken and he is the oracle today. He has given us the roadmap and also the pathfinder, how do we get there? We have listened to all the speakers. The, the chairman of the party. We have also listened to the man from the university, Professor Badejo, who has given us what to think about to sustain the maritime sector. We have also had the chairman of the board of trustees who has told us that we are here for maritime and we want consensus to reign. Above all, what matters most in this forum is the feeling and aspirations of the stakeholders. So if the stakeholders want the, can the presidential candidate to hear them very well, they should please, please keep quiet so that I can take note and hear what you want. I, I only have to remind you of a few things he has said which should guide you. And we have also distributed about uh, 100 uh, critical points in the maritime industry. I hope the MC, have you distributed the critical points that have been printed out? Please give it to them to guide them so that they will not speak out of points. Again, we are going to a business. Let me give a final word of advice from a little story. Because most governments are always saying there's no money. But I'll give you a story of a six-year-old boy. He asked his father, I want to drink, I want tea. The father said, I don't have money. The boy said, I don't want money, I want tea. So this is very important that we must find ways and means to actualize all the issues that have been raised to be able to handle all the, all the challenges. And if you listen to the presidential candidate, in actual fact, I will say we can close the day because he has even given solutions why he was making his speech about how to tackle the challenges. Without prejudice to what will be, what you think about challenges, I think the MC should be here. The MC, come, please. This is the critical point because we are going to discussions, we are going to interactions. Anybody who wants to make a, a, a speech, please don't make a speech, make a point. And say, introduce yourself by your name and also the point you want to be noted. The MC will carry the microphone to anybody who wants to speak and we we'll start from the left here. You raise your hand and you take the microphone 
and you speak one minute. I don't want three questions at the same time. Let's all give chance to others. Okay. My name is uh, Father Francis of Motosho. Um, I'm also the registrar of Nagaf Academy. And this is very interesting and it catches my mind. Um, as a senator, I'm a full member of NNPP. As a matter of fact, one of the founding members in Lagos. I could recollect, though you have spoken and you've said so many things about the challenges, but I just want to drive my point down to three points. Because this is a social contract. The contract is, in politics, is about what we, are, what we stand to gain or what we stand to get. One, in the issue of Nigeria, Right from the time of uh, Bode Thomas, as in Minister of Transport, there has never been any expert in the field of transport or supply chain that have been the Minister of Transport. Bode Thomas was a lawyer. All the so appointed uh, ministers were never uh, experts in the field of transport or supply chain or freight forwarding. Now, we agreed to come to this place for this contract. By the special grace of God, you will be elected as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We want the Ministry of Transport to be under our care. We don't want any other... You're watching the history-making event of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, as it becomes the first ever political party in the country to present a maritime agenda to Nigerians prior to the general election. This, the party says, is due to the fact that it considers the sector a priority area since it is the second highest revenue earner for the nation. The party's presidential flag bearer, Senator Rabi Musa Kwankwansu, who is a special guest at the occasion, is also using the opportunity to interact with maritime stakeholders with a view to understanding the peculiar needs of this vital sector of the economy. Senator Kwankwansu is expected to enter into a social contract with the stakeholders on what they should expect from the NNPP government should the party come into power in 2023.